the progestogen-only pill, the POP or the mini pill. These pills are less commonly used in comparison to the OCP, but are very useful in those women who cannot take estrogen-containing contraception because it is contraindicated or not tolerated. The POP, of course, contains the progesterone only. One pill is taken every day. There is no pill-free interval when taking the POP, so no breaks. And very importantly, it is taken at the same time each day. If missed by a few hours, this would be deemed a missed pill. And depending on the type of POP, the time frame will vary and require taking the pill as soon as it is remembered and using additional precautions for 48 hours. If vomiting within two hours of taking the pill, another pill should be taken as soon as possible. But if repeated vomiting and diarrhea, then the missed pill rules should be followed. Now, when it comes to starting the pill, just like the OCP, the POP should be started on days 1 to 5 of the menstrual cycle. If started after day 5, additional precautions are required for 48 hours. Now, there are two main POP types, the traditional POPs and the new generation POPs. As appropriately named, you don't really use the traditional POPs anymore, but the new generation ones are used. The difference between the two is the progestogen they contain. The traditional POPs may contain levonorgestrel or norethisterone, such as norgeston. The new generation POPs contain desogestrel, such as lamia and serazet. Okay, so how does the POP work? So the primary action of traditional POPs is the thickening of cervical mucus, preventing sperm to swim up the genital tract. It also acts by thinning the uterine lining. POPs can also inhibit ovulation. Traditional POPs inhibit ovulation in up to 60% of cycles. However, it is the desogestrel containing POPs which are most effective here, inhibiting up to 97% of cycles. And in fact, inhibiting ovulation is the primary mode of action for new generation POPs. What about the efficacy of the mini pill? So with perfect use, the mini pill is 99% effective. But with typical use, it is 91% effective. If you don't remember the difference between the perfect and typical use, check out my previous video on the OCP. Now looking at the main advantages next, so as we said before, the POP is a safe method for those women who cannot take estrogen-containing contraception, such as women over 35 years who smoke, who suffer from migraine with aura, or have some sort of thrombogenic risk. It can also be used in women who are breastfeeding. The fact that there is no pill-free break results in better compliance in comparison to the OCP. On the other hand, compliance is also one of the disadvantages of the POP because you need to remember to take the pill and within a certain time window. A relatively common side effect with the mini pill is erratic bleeding and spotting, occurring in 40% of women on the POP. Thirdly, the POP also interacts with liver enzyme-inducing drugs, such as phenytoin, so can it be taken in this group. Lastly, it does not offer any protection against sexually transmitted infections, and therefore condoms will need to be used. There are also some contraindications to the POP. These include ischemic heart disease, stroke, breast cancer, liver disease, and SLE. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe.